Since we've just asked the audience how to deal with the 1.5 degree climate uh, targets, we've seen that people in the audience are a bit skeptical about managing that. What do you think? Do we have to brace to see major impacts in the tourism sector? And if so, what sort of impact will that be? Well, it would be nice if we could uh, uh, and, and would prepare for big changes, but I don't see such a big transformation in the tourism industry happen simply because we don't have the political framework for that. Nothing has been decided. Just to make clear where we stand, this 1.5 degree target, to achieve that, every single citizen in Germany would need to uh, restrict emissions to 1.5 tons a year. And at the moment, every citizen in Germany and virtually everybody in Europe is emitting 12 tons of CO2 every year. And even if you try to do everything right, don't fly, don't drive, buy regional, don't eat meat. And if you're a really radical green, you still will emit five tons of CO2. So we are far removed from reaching this 1.5 degree. We won't even get to two degrees unless politicians create a framework which would entail drastic decisions, which would also sadly affect the tourism sector. So that we are forced to do what we all think is right and which officially all politicians proclaim and what we have promised to do in Paris. Do we need to worry about our own environmental consciousness if people already think they live a sustainable life or is everybody just lying? Well, first of all, I think it's a bit of a trick uh, and, and pretty nonsensical to compare China and Germany. I mean, you, you'd have to start with what exactly is environmentally friendly traveling or an environmentally friendly life. I'm sure the average Chinese has a very different definition of that than the average German. Well, that's for starters. And the next thing is what people love doing in Germany is to uh, move responsibility to the consumer, saying, well, it's to the consumers, it's it's just them. I mean, they can buy organic food if they want to. It's a consumer's decision. And the same is true for traveling and everyday life. So, But that's a pretty simplified way of thinking, because I would have thought there are three points to be considered. One, as we've heard, we require political change process to be instituted. Let's be honest. For every ordinary person, there is no option in Germany but to um, elect the Greens because they do business as the Conservatives do, but they think ahead, so that's great. And the second thing is big companies now are starting to have an interest in the issue of the environment. So, you know, starting there is Ecosia, the green search engine and so on. Just imagine Google will start to plant trees or Lufthansa will plant one tree for every flight they take. I think the whole world would look different. And then we're also talking about how it's reported in the media. I think every single one here would consider sustainable travel would have to be more expensive than conventional travel. And often that's simply wrong. And the media can communicate that the wrong way too, because if you consume regional products, if you do buy your things or, or spend nights at small businesses, medium-sized businesses as you do in Costa Rica, then you'd actually find that the prices aren't that bad. So here you have to have a more holistic point of view rather than always say it's the consumer's responsibility to do it all. Compared to previous studies, there seems to be a trend towards an increased awareness among the consumers. But what does that mean for the future of airline travel? And how can you live up to these increased expectations of an more environmental travel in the long term or the short term? You're right, there is a certain element of pressure that we're going to be faced with, and we need to live up to it by gearing up to meet the challenges, particularly as far as products and performance is concerned. There are basically two levels we're working on. One is what can we do regarding onboard service and what we can impact uh, directly. But we have a huge problem that when we are flying a plane, we need fuel, and the fuel has to use energy. We can't just uh, change to battery or hydrogen or whatever. So as far as that's concerned, um, we, we are sort of held captive by physics. But we still have to look at what we can do. Can we tackle the problems? There are options. Uh, certificate trading, carbon offsetting, emissions training, global, down to testing alternative types of fuel. But these are things which probably will need generations until that's developed. I mean, I'm talking about a pretty long time scale, which makes it absolutely important to start early on. 
and to start thinking very early to what extent we can do things. In concrete terms, at Lufthansa, some years ago, we started uh, with biofuel, and we are now testing alternative fuels called power fuels. But that is one thing we have to say for the time being. That's five, six, seven, eight times as expensive as the fuel we're using now, and that is prohibitively expensive. But it doesn't mean that we're not tackling the issue. And shareholders are expecting that, customers are expecting that, and they expect us to be credible in our efforts. Yeah, Mrs. Raventos, um, we already heard about Costa Rica, and I think um, this country has made a name for itself over the years in terms of sustainable tourism development. You mentioned some examples like the functional uh, protected area system, you have sustainability criteria, you have a, a certification scheme, etc. But on the other side, we have also to see that Costa Rica's tourism demand um, also depends primarily from the North American and from the European markets. So we are talking about long haul um, flights, we are talking about um, air travel, uh, which, as we know, uh, causes the most carbon emissions uh, on a vacation. So, um, what can, from your point of view, a destination do that is so uh, uh, or is, uh, significantly depending on air travel, like? Costa Rica um, to improve the carbon footprint. So it is a little bit contradictory to say, okay, we take care of our destination, but on the other side, we uh, depend highly on this um, air travel from long haul distance uh, destinations. Yes, we we really uh, is are trying to 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 include in all the packages to Costa Rica. Um, the amount to, to really compensate um, a, a travel between uh, traveling between Europe and Costa Rica is around uh, 1,300 uh, 1 1.3 tons, uh, and um, we created an office that is called the National Forestry Finance uh, Fund, where you can buy to plant trees and really compensate these emissions. So it costs six dollars one way to to compensate these emissions. So in a trip that we have very long stays in Costa Rica, so we're talking that this is less than one percent of the cost of the total trip to compensate the emissions and even less from the US. So we really think that this is important, and of course, everything that the tourist industry is doing to compensate and become uh, carbon neutral, all the, the, the activities and all the, the commitments that the private sector is doing to, to become carbon neutral. And we just launched our decarboniz decarbonization plan uh, two weeks ago, the president that we are going to be a carbon neutral country by 2050, 2050. So uh, the whole country is working towards this, and of course the tourism sector is working towards this as well. Okay. What does it mean for me if I book via your platform? How would I travel differently rather than taking other online uh, travel agencies offers? Could you explain? I could. Book it green. Is, uh, is a sustainable platform for eco lodges, uh, organic hotels, anything that is sustainable is what you book when you go through us. Now the nice thing about that is today that many people uh, embrace a sustainable lifestyle at home. They purchase regional food, organic food, uh, they don't uh, use clean chemical detergents, they use uh, renewable energies and these are values that we would like to continue in the holiday sector and offer that in our platform. Our accommodation uh, meet at least four of our 15 sustainability criteria. And at the same time, we uh, look at certificates and our guests also, after their stay, they can report back to us and rate the sustainability of the hotel or hostel, wherever they have stayed. Now, the dis difference here is we are not one of those big, huge commercial platforms. And that's an advantage for us, really, because the hosts uh, are not being suppressed by what we do as they normally would help you elsewhere. And we're clearly focusing on sustainability and lodging. And if I may, a few more words on that. Now, when I'm listening to Lufthansa, this is very interesting, I must say. Because what, I, what would, I do, would I do in your place? Well, first of all, I would do away with flights between Nuremberg and Munich. Makes no sense. We don't need those, number one. I mean, honestly, honestly. And 
Qatar Airways will not fly between Nuremberg and Munich, so I don't buy your argument there. And indeed, I would leave it up to the consumer to take a decision. As you rightly said, you can compensate for CO2 consumption. And if you're saying at the end of your checkout, well, I want to donate for reforesting plants in order or forests, and uh, Lufthansa might incentivize them, say, okay, we double your uh, active uh, donation, you know, by doubling up on what consumers are spe uh, spending, that would be great. I mean, you're impu improving your reputation as well. And when it comes to engineering changes, do we need and for another 20 years until the new Elon Musk comes and revolutionizes the travel sector? Or, now, for a change, couldn't, uh, you know, the big VW in aviation, which is Lufthansa, be a pioneer in that role of technical advancements? So that would be my question. You should take an active role and go ahead with it. No, the question was right. And we're asking those questions ourselves. Now, between flying between Nuremberg and Munich, you're absolutely right. It's on our agenda, of course. But there are a number of complexities. Why? We're talking about slots. Slots are uh, awarded freely. And all of a sudden, we have other flights that fly between other airports. And you're right that Qatar Airways doesn't operate between Nuremberg and Munich, but probably others would if the slots were available. What I'm saying is that this is a network system, and many things are linked to one another. And if you're doing this business, you would be surprised how complex it is. When it comes to trees and carbon offsetting, we are offering that already. We have just reinforced our activities in carbon offsetting and uh, are um, expanding it from there. And we are focusing on what we can influence. We can influence consumers, of course. And we are consumers of the uh, oil producers. And obviously, we can tell them, please help, you know, help us. We help you in certifying. Uh, we help uh, in experimenting with biofuels in our aircraft engines. But we have to focus on what we are able to do, horses for courses. And um, I think... Uh, we need to solve problems like slot uh, development or slot awarding, and we have to be global in what we do. And it's no good at all to uh, you know you know do Lufthansa bashing. You need the other ones as well. It's a global industry after all. So now you're a pessimist, apparently, as we heard from your initial statement. Are you more pessimistic after hearing what you just heard, or do you think there's something that uh, uh, some of the arguments you heard here were convincing? Now, I agree, companies cannot solve the problems alone. They need political support. The European Union is providing political support. Well, in the last 20 or 30 years, what I realized that people are eco-friendly, aware, that of documentation, green documentation in cinemas, we know it all. 90% of Europeans want more climate action, but apparently we can't get it done. We are flying more than double as we did before. And where does where do the political conditions start? Now take flying, take airline travel, and you, you know, remember my book, Eco Routine. It's called. You can read up on it. L let us limit the number of starts, um, so uh, departures and arrivals on the current level. EU air travel should not grow from now. What would that mean? And I'm not talking about uh, uh, frugality. I'm not. I'm just talking about not growing anymore. Let's freeze the level of arrivals and departures in Europe. What would the federal government do if it's doing nothing? Business as usual, no more slots awarded for starts and arrivals. If Munich is not expanding its airport and Frankfurt's not building a new terminal building, my proposal would be implemented overnight. Isn't that fascinating? It's fascinatingly simple. Not growing solves the problem. What is Lufthansa's excuse towards later generations to offer so many unnecessary short distance flights? I think that's a question for you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, basically, we, we're checking our network mm -hmm. and, and we see where there was where there's really kind of demand of traveling on short, on short haul. But we're also track, che checking and um, proving the ability to switch to intermodal. That means getting trains into the system. We have a very good experience when we changed or skipped all the flights between Cologne and Frankfurt because there's a good train connectivity. What we need actually is the short haul flights to feed into our network, to feed into the hubs. Um, and this, this is actually the, the point that we would like to switch somehow into, let's say, intermodal traffic. But we can't do that in the mo at the moment because th the products serving into it are not are, are not there. But we're checking it currently also again um, and making sure that we will have a network, so to say, feeding into the, into the, into our hubs. 
but let's ask the, the yeah, <laughs> listeners one short question. What do you think? Um, did Mr. Dietrich take a flight from Frankfurt to Berlin or not? Just raise your hands if you think he did. <laughs> well, I took the flight. <laughs> See, so, so do, do you think that I took a flight from Frankfurt to Berlin or? You see, that's, that's, a, that's a choice we can make all day, every day. It's just a matter of perspective, I guess. And we can all make that choice. Sure. <laughs>